Pepsi Muscle. See the difference. Today, it's big business. Once regarded as niche products, these pills, foods and powdered shakes are now sold on every high street. Last year, their promises to boost sporting performance and recovery made us part with more than £100 million. They claim to increase your muscle mass, they claim to allow you to lose weight or lose body fat um, and get you ripped and lean for summer. Um, they make all sorts of claims about time scales as well. You know, you can get this body in X amount of weeks by using X product. Quite productive, so, I should imagine. Very. It's not just bodybuilders who use nutritional supplements. These protein shakes and workout boosters with scientific sounding ingredients are now sold in gyms everywhere. I use a protein shake which is good because I'm having a very busy schedule during work so I don't have that much time to have a proper meal so the protein shake is something that helped me a lot to get the, the enough protein and calories that I need for my day. To perform at your best. The market leader in sports supplements is GlaxoSmithKline. Some of Britain's top athletes endorse its maxi nutrition range from the Olympic triathlon team to the English Rugby Union. But do any of us really need them? Some of GSK's products contain branch chain amino acids, which are found in muscle protein. The company says these amino acids help hard training athletes recover faster after intense exercise. Once again, the team from Oxford and the BMJ looked for the science behind the claim. Branching amino acids is an interesting one. The evidence doesn't stack up and the quality of the evidence doesn't allow us to say these do improve in performance or recovery and should be used as a product widely. So you don't think the evidence is there to make those claims? Yeah, we certainly don't think that that's uh... They couldn't find good evidence that branch chain amino acids boost recovery or performance. Yet a tub of them can set you back 34 quid. Another triumph of marketing over science, says Professor Lee. There is limited evidence, again in high level, high performing uh, athletes, that certain amino acids which form part of proteins um, may improve muscle strength. This is absolutely fringe evidence, and I think that that is almost totally irrelevant, even at the top level. The advertising and marketing is all out there, and this has become yet another factory for exercise, and a rather expensive way of getting a bit of milk. GSK told us... We stand by the evidence that branched-chain amino acids can enhance performance or recovery but except we must work within new rules published in May by the European Food Safety Authority regarding claims. Therefore, we shall revise our label accordingly while we gather further evidence required to substantiate the claims we believe can be made. You can get all the nutrients you need from food. So what research underpins products like these? When you look at it, it's such low quality that actually there's no evidence to suggest that that's any better than eating a, a diet that's rich in protein and carbohydrate. That's the best way to receive these nutrients. Canadian company Vega Sport sells a range of plant-based shakes and supplements over the internet. Another of the Oxford researchers took a closer look for the science behind them. This company has made claims like uh, get in the zone with energy to burn, push harder, last longer, and recharge and repair so you can do it all again sooner. So quite bold claims. Certainly, certainly. Uh, and then what we did is we went through the websites and looked to see if they referred to any research that backed up these claims. Generally what we found is that the references referred to uh, research evidence that was of fairly low quality. What uh, like? So let me give you an example of one, which is a study from 1930 uh, that looks at... 1930? Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, it's a study in rats from 1930. What's really important to us, looking at the quality of evidence, is not actually that it's from 1930. It's that it was in rats. Because if the company is making this claim that this product enhances human sports performance, doing a study in rats doesn't really back that up. 
Vega Sport told us. We stand by the quality of our products and have substantiated our website's marketing claims in accordance with laws in both Canada and the United States. Nutritional supplements offer a shortcut to best performance, and according to football's top governing body, that promise has influenced those even at the top of the game. It's quite widespread. I would say that at the professional level, somewhere between 20 to 40 percent of the players would take regularly dietary supplements. That's a lot. Are you surprised by that? Of course I'm surprised because uh, we would assume that a well-balanced diet would supply you with all the necessary ingredients you need for a um, healthy life. FIFA's main concern is making sure the supplements players take aren't tainted with banned substances like steroids. But they also want to know if they work. FIFA asked top scientists from around the world for evidence. One of the issues was, does dietary supplement add anything positive to the well-being, number one, and to improve the performance? And there was a uh, unanimous uh, consensus that dietary supplements do not make you a better footballer. Even though there's such a lack of evidence these supplements improve performance, it doesn't stop manufacturers approaching FIFA for endorsement. Our answer is always the same. Prove it. Provide the scientific evidence, publish it in a peer-reviewed journal, well-respected journals, and then we can discuss. And when you issue that sort of challenge, what response do you get from the companies? Usually I don't hear much not something which would be a science we are talking about. Record-breaking cyclist Graham Aubrey shares FIFA's concern that these performance-enhancing products are a waste of money. You can achieve the same results for less cash with a balanced diet. Before I went out training, if I was going to go out a two-hour ride today, I would actually prepare sardines, bread ready in the toaster, and a pile of broccoli and carrots. I would come straight in to go right, phew, toast, sardines on it, and my veggies in the microwave. That's my recovery drink as an actual proper meal. I think he's talking with complete common sense, and he's talking from personal experience at the very top end. And there's a man who, who has held world records, and in, in, in principle he says none of these supplements are going to make any difference at all. The well, idea that you've got to drink something to recover is actually a very, relatively new concept, and it's a good money spinner. Mm -hmm.